Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, today we have a guest who's a musician. He plays every kind of instrument there is. He plays, I guess, I don't even know how, what, how you would describe his music. He can tell us. But he, it's kind of like that image you get of the little Cupid in, a, in heaven on the cloud playing the harp. He plays kind of that kind of music. That's the way I envision it anyway. Actually, couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, we uh, have a lot of Andy's, we're using Andy's music in our TV show, Long Ride Home. And so I know a lot of people are, are interested in who is, who is this person behind some of the music we have. And so we have Andy Gallagher on here. He plays just about every instrument you can imagine. I remember when, the, when they talked about the Beatles, one time they were being interviewed and they asked, uh, they asked the Beatles, so is Ringo Starr the best drummer, rock and roll drummer in the whole world? And I think it was... Uh, John Lennon that said he's not even the best drummer in our band, you know, I, <laughs> and that may be an Andy because Andy can, plays all kinds of musical instruments, and uh, and so we're so stoked to have someone uh, from from uh, Scotland. But actually, Andy Gallagher, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks for having me, Bear. Hey, so uh, you have a strange accent for someone who was born in Los Angeles. Yeah, I think that's um, that's the culmination of ten years there and thirty years here. So ten years in LA, so that's a Southern LA accent, a northern, northern, uh, somewhere in, near Sc uh, Glasgow, Scotland. That's right. <laughs> now, is that where where was James Bond from? Where was the original James Bond from? Was he wasn't well, he Scottish? Uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, uh, Sean Connery. Kind of Edinburgh. Wait, uh, well, I don't know what is Edinburgh. Is that in Scotland or England? Uh, that's that's um, uh, that's in uh, Scotland. It's like our capital. I've I've so. heard of I've heard of Scotland. I got a confession to make. Uh, my wife and I watched every single episode of James Bond uh, during this Corona thing. <laughs> but James Bond is Sean Connery is James, is is the real James Bond. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he, he brought he brought us that he brought us that Scot that Scottish accent. So so what brought you guys from L.A. to to Scotland? Uh, well, my dad uh, started a business over. He's actually uh, he's originally from Scotland. He was born here, um, uh, but he he decided to come back to Scotland um, and start a business over here. Uh, we came with him, um, and that was it. It's kind of a tradition, right? <laughs> Family <Yeah. moves. laughs> And so, yeah. what was it like? Because I know you were like, a, were you a Dodger fan in LA, or what were you? You played baseball, or? Big Dodger fan, yeah. Um, one of my favorite uh, teams was like Kirk Gibson and Steve Sachs and Fernando Valenzuela, you know, Tommy Lasorda. Yeah. Oh, I love well, Tommy Lasorda. Vin Scully, man. Yeah, yeah. No, my I, sons, I, my son Jeremiah and I used to watch. I mean, I remember the Kirk Gibson, you know, the, I guess it was the athletics, right, they were playing against. I remember that. He was injured and he, he hit, a, hit a home run out of the park. And I really... I'm not a baseball fan, but I have to say I'm a Dodger fan. And Vin Scully educated me in the way of baseball. So you, at that young of age, you were already about that. that you're the same age as my son Jeremiah, by the way. So yeah, it was about that age when they were when he was watching baseball with me too. Yeah, loved it. You know, it was a great experience to witness that that period of the Dodgers. You know. And yeah. Did absolutely. you ever get to go to the stadium? Yeah, yeah, quite a few. See, uh, my uncles used to take me all the time. Um, so I, I saw you know, my, uh, great, great uh, games there. Um, always really excited to go, you know, and the one thing I do miss, Dodger dogs. I was going to bring that up. Like, it's not like about the game so much as the Dodger dogs, right? Oh, man. I know my son once got to go down on the field for some oh. reason. His, his baseball team that he was on or something got to go down to the field and he just loved that, but I know uh, I don't know if what other baseball parks are like, but Dodger Dogs are where they. And you know Tommy Tommy Lasorda, when he talks about baseball, it's like he's eating pasta. It's like baseball's the most delicious. And you know how the Italians, when you have even at some Italian restaurants, they just bring out all kinds of food and everyone just passes around the bowls. He talks about baseball like it's delicious. <laughs> You know, he just everything he does, he just really loves. So you were a Dodger fan. 
Yeah, big, big Dodger fan. I'll, I always remember a story that my friend told me about uh, Steve Sachs. Um, uh, he's, he's my favorite baseball player of all time. I know it's a kind of strange one, but uh, Tommy Lasorda uh, was kind of saying, oh, Steve Sachs, he's, he's a, as dumb as a, as a bat, but the guy's got heart. You know, right. he, there, he gives it his all, and you cannot uh, take that away from him, you know? And that's... That, that, that is awesome, you know. That's a life lesson right there. I remember he called Oral Hershiser, this kind of long, lanky, kind of soft-looking guy, the pit bull. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because he yeah. was just so determined. You know, yeah, and that that is – that we could end the broadcast right now, now because I think that's one thing right there that we all can learn from. It's not so much about the talent as the – what does it say? It's not so much about the the – the dog in the fight is the fight in the dog, you know, um, that determination, uh, yeah, but, you know, that, yeah. that, that if you're living in the, in the world today, you're Rocky Balboa, you're in the middle of a- adversity. It's a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's one of these things that it's, you know, you can, everybody can take something from baseball. You know, there's, there's a, there's this beauty to it. There's the athleticism, but there's also the kind of mindset of kind of, you know, there is a rule and there, there is a kind of this focus, but you have to be prepared. You know, you have to have this kind of mindset of, you know, it goes over and above. You know? Yeah, what's going to, there's a preparation for the game, but there's like, what's going to happen next? Man on first, you got a left-handed batter, right-handed pitcher. Where's the ball? Where, what's the propensity? You got all these statistics. Uh, you're, it's so weird because this is the second, uh, the two interviews ago, I was interviewing Matt Swain from the Sunrise Morning Show. He was like, I was going to talk with him about um, the Hobbit and all of the, the adventures in, in relation to Catholicism, and then we ended up talking about baseball. <laughs> it's and it, what it teaches us about about you know our walk with the Lord. Speaking of walks, you know that's one of the things you can do in baseball. But I think the whole thing about baseball is about going home. Yeah. It's a, it's, it can be a long ride home, but you know, <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about, it's, it's, it's about going home. It's that, it's that, it's that personal journey. As father Spitzer says, the five upward yearnings of each of us, uh, one of them is a desire to go home. You know, no yeah. matter where you are, you're in Glasgow, Scotland, it may feel like home, but you know, you have that yearning for heaven. Yeah. There's something. Absolutely. There. So I want to I want to get right to this now. You're you uh, you moved there when you were uh, uh, about ten years old to Scotland. When did you begin? And you were raised Catholic. I was, yeah, yeah. I went to Our Lady of Telpa in um, Los Angeles. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I was baptized there. What have you? And and so. what, but I mean, you know, you, so many people when they're young, they they're kind of they grow up in the faith. But when did you really go become a devout Catholic? Um, I was going through a pretty hard time um, when I was maybe 16. In fact, I was 16. Uh, my grandfather passed away on my 16th birthday, and I took it very, very hard. Um, and I struggled for a year after that. And in that you, year... You, you I, had a close relationship with him? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, very, very close. Um, when he was of- there... What kind of did you do things together or yeah well um he, he was always um kind of showing me different things of how to make make things uh, he was a joiner by trade um and he we we used to have this little thing under the house where it was like a, a just a, a workshop where he was showing me how to kind of drill and kind of nail things together. He even showed me what a kind of dovetail joint was, you know? <laughs> so it was like uh, Jesus and Joseph. Sort of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one of the things was, I, I just wish that I was there longer so I could learn more from him. Uh, it's one of these things that I am in awe of joiners. Uh, well, this dove, and, the dovetail joint, that alone is really special. What, what describe that, how you make it. And what, uh, what, it's, Basically, it's two pieces of wood. Uh, one is like a one's got a tra- trapezoid type shape or kind of a, a triangle shape, um, and it fits tightly into another thing, which makes it solid. You know, it locks it uh, in without any any screw dri- screws or anything like that. No, uh, that's the beauty of this. It kind of makes it so tight 
and the tighter you make it, the stronger it becomes. Ah, uh, and we see that in our in our own in our own faith, our own our own Catholic faith. Um, just just the 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 cl- the seamlessness of that, and the solidness, you know, of our faith. Jesus uh, was a tecton; he was a builder, you know. And the only thing we know that he built was his church. He said, "I will build my church." And yet he was raised. He was just the closeness he felt with his father, you know, in the shop. I imagine them working in a shop together, and uh, Jesus hitting his. I wonder if Jesus ever hit, hit his uh, finger with a hammer or. Or, but but learning those skills in his human in his human in his humanness, learning those those skills, so that would bring you close. My my own son Jeremiah worked in the wood shop with his with with his uh, grandfather, not not my father, my my wife's father, but yeah. yeah, he and he and he and he loved he loved uh, he just loved being out there with him, learning those skills, and it really really brings you close. And I think we see here, Andy, the need for men to spend that kind of time with their sons, whether it's teaching them to surf or. Or hunt, or whatever that man is into, uh, bring your sons along and, and teach them. We're talking with Andy Gallagher. And Andy is a musician from Scotland. What can you just give us a website? One website. I didn't get get that down, Andy, where people can reach you. Uh, well, you can go to overhaulmusic.com. Overhaulmusic.com, and and you can find out more about Andy. He uh, works with. He, we're using some of his music in Long Ride Home. We'll be more more. Uh, more discussion about that when we get back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you men to go to the deepadventure.com website and click on that little spot that says warning, do not enter uh, for men only. Click on that button and you can become a part of Bear's Man Cave. We uh, it's, for, it's for men only. Uh, you can't join it by going to the Facebook, but we do have a secret Facebook group as part of what we do. And we and our guest, Andy Gallagher, is a member there. We challenge each other. We encourage each other. We inspire each other. We're there when people are really facing uh, temptations or we're there when people are facing difficulties. But we're all basically bozos on the same bus. You don't have to be perfect to be a part of the man cave. If you're perfect, you should go someplace else. But if they let people like Andy Gallagher, our guest, and me be a member, it's a pretty cool place to be. So go there, deepadventure.com. Join the man cave. We Every two or three weeks, whenever I feel like it's some random night or daytime, we have our Zoom video chats. We've been doing that for two or three years, and it's really been a great way to build fellowship with people all over the world. Andy Gallagher, musician, Catholic, Glasgow, Scotland. Welcome back to our show, Andy. Hey, hey. good to hear. Well, you were talking to us about your grandfather and how he you you grew close to him in that little shed where he taught yeah. you uh, different uh, woodworking skills and and things like that. And you were talking about how when you were about sixteen, uh, you, you you lost him and how it broke your heart. Yeah, it, it, it kind of it affected me deeply. Uh, and I wasn't expecting it. Uh, the, the kind of grief that 
it's hard to explain. Uh, and, uh, to, and unfortunately, I kept it within me. I bottled it up. Um, and it's quite possibly the worst thing you can do. Um, and I, I kept that with me for a long, long time. Um, but it was changing me from the inside out. It, it, was, it was really affecting me. I was um, angry a lot of the time. I was sad a lot of the time. And I didn't know how to, as a kind of a, a young guy going through that, I, was, I didn't know how to express myself. Um, and thank God that uh, at the exact same, as I was going through this, my, well, my wife came into the scene at that point. God put Pauline in to my life and deeply devout woman um, uh, kind of got me back on straight and narrow and actually showed me or kind of said to me and it showed me a challenge and said, you know, you write all this, you, you have all this music inside you, you, you know, why don't you just write how you feel? Mm. And all, after that, when she said that to me, I think it was about two weeks later, I handed her this cassette tape. I said, like, there's, there's seven, eight songs that I've written, you know, no and, it was kidding. About, and it was all about kind of just unloading, uh, this grief, this anger, this kind of everything that was bothering me. I got it. I, I wrote it, scrolled it out and, t- and it was just so, so amazing. It was, it was a feeling unlike it, anything that I had before. Isn't it interesting how music will just flow like that once it, I've used to, you know, be in a band and, and we played music and, and I wrote songs. Um, and I, isn't it interesting sometimes how when you're writing, it just seems to, it just seems to just flow, the, the, the lyrics and the, and the, and the yeah. music. Yeah. Oh, when, once you start, you know, it's hard to stop, you know, because <laughs> there's so much that you want to put on that paper and so much you want to convey in a song. Uh, I don't know if, if you've, you're a songwriter. The, with me, I tend to overwrite and then I have to go to all right, I have to kind of bring that back a little bit. You well, know? Do, you, do you start like for me, it was, it was, I would get a, a, a chord progression or something that, that was communicating the feeling in my heart. Yeah. And then the lyrics would come or, or did you ever just wake up at night and you had the first two words to the song or how do, how did the music come to you? No, but I always kind of, um, noodle around on a guitar and if something comes out that sounds interesting, um, what the first, I always, I always make this a rule is the first emotion that it evokes for me. That's what I write about. Isn't and if that, I can remember it, the next day, it's a keeper. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And you'll have the words and then you got to stop and write them down and then you lose the, you lose the feeling of the song and you got to go back. But isn't it interesting? The whole concept of music, I know in the early centuries, like, you know, the turn when Jesus was on earth during that time, when people studied music, it was more of a mathematical study of harm, harmonics, Yeah, you know, yeah. but you think about David writing his, the, his heartfelt music. He sometimes he'd be in a cave hiding. Another time it was after a great triumph. Why does music touch our soul so much? Or why does it come out of our soul like that? Uh, the the whole concept. That. You know, God definitely put it in there for us to enjoy, you know, and it's one of these things. It's it's funny because you can listen to a deeply, deeply, deeply sad piece of music. And it, you can come out of that thing feeling joyous, you know, because okay, it, it, it kind of processes feelings that you have that needed to be processed. I, I, yeah, I, I'd imagine so. You know, it's it's one of these things that I can, I, I can listen um, to. to classical music very 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 sad music but you you come out of that and there's a kind of you've experienced something you you felt something uh, touch you emotionally about it and you feel alive that's that's really all i can you know the liturgy the hours this morning as i was praying them um i forget which of the early church fathers referenced moses and miriam they were not known to be musicians Mm mm-hmm you know, but after crossing the Red Sea, this poetic song came out. The horse and the rider have been thrown into the sea. Miriam wrote those, but Moses was the lawgiver, you know. But somehow, uh, music expressed better than words yeah. what they experienced. Yeah. It's, it's a funny one because um, everybody has a song 
everybody has a piece of music that they enjoy. Everybody has a kind of, even if it's you're not into the kind of pop culture or rock music or whatever, something somewhere somebody will always connect to music. And it's just this link that we all have. And there's and, a po- and most. Mu- I'm sorry. Go ahead, Andy. No, no, honey, go, honey, go. But in most music, uh, it's not just the music; it's the lyrics. And so much of the scripture, the most profound parts of scripture, are poetry. Mm-hmm. Because cool. because there's a certain depth of of our knowing God that you can't uh, talk like it's under a microscope. Let's analyze the theology behind this. The greater, deeper things have to be expressed in poetry or in music. You, the yeah. deepest things you can't say really in words. Uh, you know, at the mass, so much of our our mass is is lyrical. You know, it's, it's poetic. It's from the Psalms or it's from the early church fathers. But even the even the the the, the prayers that the priest says are, are poetic in nature. So so much of them. The deeper things, you can't write an, an analytical narrative about the Trinity. You have to do it allegorically or through poetry or through music. Yeah. You know, I often wonder, you know, we, you mentioned Father Spitz earlier on. I, I love his show. I can't say that I understand it. <laughs> but if it was such a music, I'd probably understand it a lot better. <laughs> he would be the first one to say that, I think, too. And yeah. I love, you know, I just finished reading his first four books. I think he's got a fifth one coming out. But, and then I was with him at the Napa Institute. And oh, wow. of course, I told him I love your books, and he goes, "Yeah." And then he asked me questions like a college professor, right? He was the president of Gonzaga, and I, of course, I had the answers because I just read them. And then I had my man cave cigars, the Seven Virtue cigars that we have on our website, and I gave and I provided all the cigars for the Nappy Institute. They have cigar night every night at the Nappy Institute, and I got to sit next to Father Spitzer while he smoked one of my cigars. I mean, that's a one-hour moment, right? You don't. It takes an hour yes. to have one. But uh, tell me more about that. That it's the soul's upward yearning, right? What is it about Father Spitzer's, uh, uh, what he says? How does that communicate with you about your music and your ministry? Um, it's baffling to me. It is absolutely baffling. But there's also simplicity to it. Mm. That um, yeah, he, he, he's a brilliant, brilliant man, uh, and very, very highly intelligent. And if I, if I can kind of uh, make sense of, say, five minutes of what he's saying on his, yeah. you know, yeah. on his program, then I, I think, oh, I got five minutes of that. Well, think about this, Andy. What if my show was called The Bear Wozniak Universe? That'd be really overstating it, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you, but Father Spitzer's universe, that seems just about right. It's okay to communicate to your children things, too, that are too profound for them to understand. Yeah. The church does that every Sunday. We don't understand it. And to shoot over your head. It's over our heads, but that makes us look up, you know? Yeah, it makes you want to learn more. You know, you kind of think, well, how, how, how do I make sense of that? You know, and it sort of kind of opens up your mind a little bit more to go, all right, well, I, I got that bit. So let's move on a little bit, you know, kind of. You know, and it opens so, your heart. It opens your heart. We're talking with Andy Gallagher. <clears throat> Andy, what's your website again where they can reach you? Uh, overhaulmusic.com overhaulmusic.com that sounds like a great uh, just just the name alone we're going to talk about how that, how you came up with that name when we get back but it just reminds me of our walk with of renewal and our personal pedag- pedagogy with the Lord it's an overhaul I remember when I took my, my car in for the first tune up after I bought this run down Volkswagen and I took it up and said it needs an overhaul and I thought I meant tune up <laughs> and they go oh that's going to cost you about you know who knows how much hundreds and hundreds of dollars I go oh well can you just change the spark plugs? And they go, oh, you mean a tune-up. But we all sometimes need a, a, a spark plug or an oil change, but a lot of times we just need a, a whole overhaul. I feel like some of the men that are listening to this are just like drowning, and they, they look at themselves in the mirror, and they're ashamed, or they don't even recognize who, who they've become, and they want a way back. And we're talking about Andy Gallagher, uh, our, one of the musicians that we, whose music we use on our TV show, Long Ride Home. We're going to talk about how to do a personal overhaul when we get back. The Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide. 
as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to do a special shout out uh, to the women that love our show. When Cindy and I go out to different locations where I'm speaking, uh, it's often the women that have come up that have the most visceral response to what we do. Thank God you're there. You're able to talk to my husband in words that that he communi- that really communicate to him. And I, I, there's someone who I can send your newsletters to. Uh, uh, you, I can I, I send them when your TV show is going to be on Long Ride Home, the motorcycle show, or your radio show. So women, there is a place for you in our ministry. Uh, go to deepadventure.com, subscribe to our newsletter, letter, and uh, or maybe join our mug club, and you'll be able to get you'll receive it. You'll receive things that you can share with your husbands, your sons, your brothers, or the men in your life. And more than anything, we 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 need your prayer. It's amazing how in our ministry, how the expense of running the, this ministry, doing the TV shows and the uh, the radio show, without an awful lot of support, most of our no no support on the from EWTN financially for the radio show and a limited amount for the TV show. And so it's really a walk in faith. It's really interesting how I'll, I'll be facing a huge wall, usually something financial, because going out and shooting a TV show is, is quite daunting by itself. And the walls will just fall down. And I know it's because I have women praying for, praying for this ministry. So we want you to know we love having you a part of our ministry and that there's a place where if you go, go to our website, deepadventure.com, when I met with uh, Monsignor Gino at the Vatican a couple of years ago, he's in charge. He was in charge of the new evangelization for the English-speaking world. He said, "You guys are doing the hard thing, and I don't know anybody else that's doing what you're doing. Not only are you reaching men, but you're not preaching to the choir. You're trying to reach men that are outside of the church. So, uh, become part of what we do. Go to our website and join join with us. We're talking with Andy Gallagher. His music is uh, I don't know how you'd even describe it, but all I know is that he had sent me." Uh, some of his music. My wife was walking by, and she goes, "You got to use that on the on the Long Ride Home TV show." Hey, by the way, so Andy Gallagher is here with us. Uh, Andy, how did we meet? By the way, how did we get to know each other? You reached out to us. Yeah, um, I've always wanted to help in some way with EWTN, with whatever I could, with the gift God gave me. Uh, loved Long Ride Home, and I thought I'd just reach out to Bear and see what he says. The, all, the worst he could say is no thanks, but I thought I'd do it. You know. And here we are. <laughs> I've learned to listen to when people reach out to me. I listen. And you wrote an email to me. And you yeah. sent, and I said, send me some of your songs. And my wife learned, listen, she goes, you got to use that on the show. So yes, it was so cool. Yeah. So you're, you, how did you come up with the name for the band Overhaul? Um, actually, my wife came up with it. Um, we were driving back from work one day um and we just pieced together this band this is back in 1997 um and i pieced together this band and i'm kind of like oh, we really need a name because we got this gig coming up you needed and- two things you needed a bass player <laughs> and you needed a name right that's the two things you always need when you're starting a band <laughs> am i right well, or wrong yeah well yeah over here it's drummers but you know, oh i play the uh, drums i'll come over Excellent. You know, that's, <laughs> that was my first instrument. So drums, great. Um, but yeah, she came up with the thing, and it, it was one of these ones where it was like, a, no, that's it. <laughs> you know, people kind of um, spend months trying to come up with a, the, a great name for a band, calling <laughs> just like that, overall. <laughs> no, kind of, that's perfect. <laughs> and when, and how, long, how long till you, you were thinking we need a new name for a band? How long did it take for her to come up with that? Like that. <laughs> Just like that. Pauline is great when it comes to stuff like that. You know, she she can come up. Why does she like? Why, what what did that name mean to her and to you when she came up with it? Because it's such a great name. 
I don't know. I really don't know how she came up with it. She it was just she just came up with it. Uh, it was. Uh, she looked at you and she said, "That guy needs an overhaul." <laughs> <laughs> no, but but, yeah, but, but get, yeah. how would you describe your music? What by the way, when when people go go to our YouTube site, Bear Wozniak YouTube site, we'll have links uh, to the overhaulmusic dot com where you can find out more about his music. But how would you describe the the music that you do? Um, I think the media uh, pigeonhole us as alternative rock uh, because we can have our really raucous side and we can have our really really kind of um soft you know youngie type you know countryside mm -hmm. you know we don't, play, we don't play country but you know that folky but you, your wife loves neil young right oh she's a big neil young fan big neil young. there's something fan. about that sound that's really special i agree it, it, it uh takes you immediately back to the 70s and no matter what that, that <laughs> harvest is just unbelievable uh, but actually neil young's sister Astrid, uh, she plays uh, bass on one of my songs. Oh, praise God! That's so cool. Yeah. So. Well, so so give us some of the give us a few of the lyrics because you said you know one of the things you discovered about your music, you loved you loved other people's music, but they didn't have the it wasn't speaking what was in your heart. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's very much so. Uh, you know, you you listen to a lot of kind of popular music now. There's, you know, if, if they're going to write about religion or if they're going to write about God, it's somewhat mocking it or somewhat kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of not cool type mm -hmm. thing. And I was finding that with a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that I was listening to, there wasn't this kind of um, Christian look to it or mm -hmm. a Christian element to it. So, you know, to try and fit that into a song, that people will listen to is can be quite difficult mm. and what i found was that kind of um through an experience of doing adoration i wrote the song called it feels like we're the only ones left on earth now a lot of people a lot of our fans thought it was a love song uh between um, you know man and woman um but it wasn't it was between me and god because uh, I spent, uh, I did overnight adoration uh, at a Benedictine monastery here in Largs. And um, I had this experience, which I'd never experienced before, just that one to one thing with God. That was, and it, what, what do you mean uh, by that? What did you, how would you describe that experience? Did you it describe like, it in the song? Um, it, it's, I try to, I try to, can you, can you give us some of the lyrics of the song that describe that? Um, well, I'll, I'll give you, let me, let me see. Um, all right, here we go. These are unsettled times. Well, what will tomorrow bring? That's why I still need to come to you. Then in comes the times of peace and tranquility. Your glow is sweet serenity. Beautiful. And now, mm -hmm. a lot of people think that's a love that's, that's about kind of being with uh you know your partner or whatever your wife whatever but that it's actually me trying to explain what it was like being in that adoration that that overnight adoration um and it was so emotional well, and, tell me when did it go ahead andy go ahead no, let me, let me go, let me go. so you overnight adoration what happened during those hours? When did you begin to experience that presence of the Lord? Or tell us what, tell us, because the Lord says, I'm the reward of those who diligently seek me. And you were doing that. What was that process? What, what, of course we can't make God show up, but God apparently yeah. showed up, right? He, tell, he, tell us about he, that. Well, um, at the time, uh, Benedict monastery, the, the mother priors, uh, phoned, uh, Pauline and asked if, uh, we, we do this overnight adoration uh, and we we sort of took it in turns. Uh, so Pauline would do a couple of hours and I would do a couple of hours. Um, and it was the second part of my, my thing and it must've been about kind of three o'clock in the morning. It, it, roughly it was, it was really, really late into it. And there was just this glow from um, the altar. And it just seemed to grow and grow and grow. And it just, uh, th just this kind of feeling 
of serenity came over me. It, 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 now, I was the only one there, and it was just amazing. It, it, it was just this kind of thing of, I'm with you right now. I can feel you. You're right there. I know you're always there, but you're, you're actually there with me, you know? And, you, you know, it was, it was unbelievable, you know? Uh, but to try to put that into a song was very difficult. And it, it, it was, uh, took a long time to do because it was one of these things like, that's not doing that justice. <laughs> How it goes, you know? But, well, but the music carries that too. I mean, we're going to be using that song in our, in our Long Ride Home TV show. But the music helps carry the feeling where the words can't quite express it. Yeah. What, what were the words again? Can you read them to, to us one more time, that, what you just read? These are unsettled times. Well, what will tomorrow bring? That's why I still need to come to you. And then comes a time of peace and tranquility. Your glow is sweet serenity. Uh, so having heard that, origin, heard it, and then you telling your story, and then hearing yeah. it again, just beautiful depth. This is Andy Gallagher on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. He's a singer, songwriter, alternative rock music. His music uh, is, is on our TV show, Long Ride Home. What a blessing, Andy, uh, to talk to you. Uh, coming from Glasgow, Scotland. How can they find your music? Well, if you go to our website, overhaulmusic.com, uh, you'll find us there. Um, that's got all the links to, if, if you do the kind of Spotify or whatever, so uh, whatever kind of streaming platform you're on. But we're on YouTube and all that as well. But, so. but start there, and that'll be a good start. Overhaul, and everyone there, God wants to overhaul. If you, have, if you feel like you're kind of beat up and the pistons aren't all firing, Go to confession. Go to Jesus. Go to a friend who, who loves Jesus and talk story with him. They will guide you towards, a, uh, towards going to church with you again. And just go, go receive Jesus. Go to the sacraments. Go to adoration. Receive the Eucharist. And uh, God has this beautiful way of overhauling us. Uh, and uh, we're so glad to have you with us, Andy. The website is overhaulmusic.com. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. Mahalo for your Kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We've been talking with Andy Gallagher. Andy is a musician from Scotland, Glasgow, Scotland area, and we use his music on Long Ride Home, so we've kind of been talking a little bit more about that, that music, and his, uh, his website is overhaulmusic.com. The name of his band is Overhaul, and we were talking a little bit about that in the last break. Andy, what do you, what, you know, 
so many of the men listening to us right now feel like they need it's they've just been put on the shelf or they feel like they fumbled the ball uh they've been beaten down by life you know a lot of times they've given it all that they can but that doesn't change the fact that they feel somewhat defeated like they've just been they've just been run over yeah um they fought the good fight sometimes they didn't fight as well as they could have a lot of times when we go through seasons like that in our lives we blame ourselves we didn't fight as good as we could have but maybe we did but um they're looking at themselves in the mirror mirror and they're 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 saying i didn't know this is where i was going to be and i've kind of lost my way mm-hmm. and they don't need a tune up they need an overhaul yeah <laughs> what would you say to them what would you say to them if you if they came up to you after one of your concerts um i would say to them there are plenty of real men in this world and you are one of them don't let life take you down focus on the true role models of your life the ones that that have taught you the important lessons in life you know like my grandfather taught me great lessons my uncle ramiro who's uh, my my godfather was such an influence in my life and i still look back now and take important lessons from him and it makes me stronger what did you they know? stand for what when you think about them in a few words what did they stand for catholicism they 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 he he lives his life with deep faith you know and although i didn't kind of appreciate it at the time i look back at it now and he is so important you know he was uh he, he was in the fire brigade or uh, the he was a fireman a paramedic in the fire department uh he, he just kind of showed so much love and influence in me it was great you know and it's it's it's, it's very strong feeling now that i when i'm feeling low when i when i get kind of beaten down by life i always think back to well right real men right who are my real men that um that helped shape me was he a I great am. theologian no no he wasn't he, was, he wasn't he, a great theologian i wouldn't say he so was a, I, he, he was a he was, he was a real man yeah he just got it he, he he it was the the faith was in him and strong and uh, i spoke to him a couple of uh weeks ago and he always thanks his parents for his faith there's nothing more profound than an ordinary man with extraordinary faith yeah yeah and he's he's a he is a great um a role model and he's got adorable kids and they've grown up to be ner- uh, they're, they're, one's um, going to be a nurse one's already in the los angeles fire department um so those great. men that are, those men are that are there right now they're feeling a little bit beaten down and in need of an overhaul the lord is with you right now and i remember when i was with my father when he gave his life really surrendered his life to the Lord. He was a devout Catholic, but when he really abandoned himself to God's will, someone told my dad, it's a come as you are party. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, uh, you don't have to get perfect before you come to the Lord. Yeah. You need a good scrub and you can get that when you go to the Lord and just confess. You can do that now and then later go to confession, be with a priest, but you can just say to the Lord right now, God, I've really tried to do it my way i've tried my very best i've worked as hard as i can doing this on my own strength and i just can't do it anymore i can't go up one more mountain rolling that rock up that hill and then seeing there's another hill bigger that i have to roll that mountain up beyond that that rock up beyond that uh my soul feels fractured my soul feel my body feels tired i've lost my vision my faith has been challenged i feel like my feet have been knocked down from under me that's a real good place to be that's a real good place to be because it's in your humility that god can reach you it's the broken and contrite soul that god's spirit is drawn to he's drawn to you when you finally say i can't do it anymore 
and you say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done, it's at that point. You know, I used to have my sailboat. Probably people were pretty smart. They didn't want to sail with me. So I'd always drag a line out beyond the boat, maybe 50 meters long. And it had knots every 10 feet. And that very, in case I fell out, hopefully I could grab that rope and pull myself in, back into the boat. The last knot on that line is called the bitter end. Sailors know it's called the bitter end. Maybe you feel you're at the bitter end. Maybe you feel like you've let down your wife and you left down, out, down your kids, you left, you've, you've let down your family. Maybe you're at the bitter end. That's a really, really good place to start. I know when we surf big waves, when we wipe out and we're, we're held under, sometimes the 20, 30 foot wave, you can be held under for two or three waves. You can be held under for over a minute. And you're just being tumbled about around. Keep your hands and your legs in close so they don't get ripped off your shoulder, you know. And you can't see which way is up. But when you get pushed down against the reef, that's a really good place because you can push off from there. You know at least which way is up. If you're in that tumbled place right now and you're in need of an overhaul, come to Jesus and just say, I give up, Lord. I surrender. I just totally give up. I can't do it anymore. I abandon my life to you. I ask you to forgive me, come into my heart, and let me do it your way, Lord. And don't be surprised. God will, God will come into your heart, and you'll suddenly be able to uh, share. You'll suddenly be able to experience uh, the lifting that we feel. You know, when you're swimming towards the towards the the ocean, when you're being held under, when you're you're swimming towards the surface, it hurts worse the closer you get to the top because you're running out of oxygen. But there's that moment when you burst forth from the surface. And the light shines in your eyes so bright and you breathe in that deep oxygen. That's what God wants for you right now. So you can just pray with Andy Gallagher and I right now. Lord, I give you my life. I surrender. I've been trying to do it on my own. I've been trying to be a real man and do it on my own. But I come to you, Jesus. You're the real man. And I abandon all that I am to you, Lord. I ask you to come into my heart, refresh and restore and fill me with your power. Fill me with your spirit. I give you all that I have, Lord. Give me direction. Give me hope. Hope. As just as Pope John Paul II said, Saint Pope John Paul II said, Coraggio, fortitude. God will give you hope. He will lift you. He'll give you the wings of the dove. He'll give you the wings of the spirit. And then, brother, go to confession. Go to confession. I remember the first time I jumped out of a plane. So scared to go to confession. You're going to be scared the first time you go. You don't even know what time or where, what church to go to. You're going to be scared. You're going to be standing in line maybe, and you're going to wish you weren't there. It's kind of like being in line on a, in an airplane when you're about to jump out of the plane with a parachute. It's very trepidatious. But go to confession because once you make that jump, I've never seen anybody jump out of an airplane where the videos of them jumping, they didn't have this look of extreme exhilaration. And by the time you the canopy opens, you'll feel that sense of peace of the Lord, and when you'll land, you'll be ready to conquer the world again. Don't be the man who was in the airplane with my son, Jeremiah, the first time he jumped and we were there together. And uh, who uh, we made a pass, dropped everybody off. There was just three of us left. One of them was this one man. He lost his bowels on the plane. Believe me, Jeremiah wanted to jump after, after that stench filled the airplane. Don't lose your bowels here. Don't lose your courage here. This isn't the time to stink up the airplane. This is the time for you to go and start over. And the best place to do that is at the confessional. We're talking with uh, my, my friend, Andy Gallagher. His band is called Overhaul. That's what you need right now is a good overhaul. And God's, God, God's the mechanic, right? right, Andy? Indeed. He knows what's in your heart and knows what you need. Have you had the chance to see that happen in other men's lives with your, with your, with your music? It's really cool because you're in the trenches. It's alternative rock. You're not playing to the choir, are you? You're doing what we do. You're doing kind of the hard thing. Yeah, yeah, um, rough and ready. I think our our fans are so. Uh, yeah, no, um, we've had a few few things. You know, um, we've had people ask what songs are about, and when you say something like uh, like like the song we were talking about before, um, what, what what's it about? It's about adoration. And when you get a, a when you get kind of messages back later on, 
saying, I've checked out what adoration is. This is cool. <laughs> you know, and then it's kind of, you, you don't know what, what's, what that's going to lead on to or what good that's going to help somebody. So, you know, even if I can do that tiny, tiny little bit and just kind of shed that kind of little light on people's lives of what God can do. You fly in under the radar and you're alternative, alternative rock and you're not a Christian musician. You're a musician who's a Christian, but you have a lot of lyrics that really entice people like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. And it draws, um, them in, draws them into that. And that's what we should be as Christians. We should be people that entice people. Yeah. That interest almost, people that come to the Lord. It's almost like a rebellion type thing. You know, it's kind of, you know, yeah. there's two, you know, I think, what was it? Um, Alice Cooper. I, I, you know, Alice Cooper? I heard of him. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he, he, he came up with a, uh, a phrase or a, a, a kind of quote the other day, and I was blown away by it. He said, drinking's easy. Trashing our hotel rooms easy, but being Christian, that's a tough call. It's Amen. rebellion. Let's you know? end that right there. Let's end it right now. Drinking is easy. Trashing a hotel is easy. But being a Christian, that's a tough call. God's calling you men to man up, to to uh, to move on in the Lord. God's looking for uh, looking for men who will be, become his, his warriors, who will lead by example their families. We're talking with Andy Gallagher. His website is overhaulmusic.com we're using his mu- music he from he's from Glasgow Scotland we use his music in Long Ride Home <laughs> you can go to our my, our website deepadventure.com and find out more about Long Ride Home and all the other stuff that we do too until next week may the breath of the holy spirit aloha you aloha hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.